Welcome to Discovering the Christian Faith, an introduction to the basic teachings of the Christian faith. This is Pastor Mike Schmidt from St. John's Lutheran Church in Napa, California. And in this session, we're going to talk about the heart of it all, the relationship that God wants to have with you and all people. Everything else in this class flows from what we talk about in this session because the whole Christian faith flows from the gospel, which this session focuses on. So let's get into it. Relationships. The most important thing in life are the relationships that you have. Isn't that true? Your family, your friends, more valuable than any of the stuff that you might accumulate. Well, God made us this way. We were made for relationships. We are relational people. Well, God also made us for relationship with himself. That just as much as we are made to find our greatest fulfillment in the relationships that we have, so we are also made to be in relationship with God. One early church writer said that we were made like with a, with a hole, a God-shaped hole in our souls that will never be satisfied until we have a relationship with God. So, God wants to be in relationship with you. He wants all people to be in relationship with him. And this is how it comes about. We're going to talk about this in more detail, but I just want to, to lay the truth in front of you. That this relationship is by grace, and that word means gift, through faith, and that means trusting in him. By grace, through faith. Now this verse, the most famous Bible verse, most well-known, John 3.16 brings it out. It's about relationships. For God so loved the world, that's a relationship word, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God loves the world. God loves you. And he gave his son so that we would not perish but instead be saved. It's about relationship and his value that he places on his relationship with you and with all people. This is what Jesus said to his disciples at the Last Supper before he was betrayed and went to the cross. And notice what he says about how important it is that we be with him, that we're in relationship with him forever. He said this, My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. God wants us to be in relationship with him, an eternal relationship. We are designed for this. But there's a problem, and we call that problem sin. Sin means missing the mark or falling short, falling short of God's will. This relationship is not a relationship of equals. God is God, and we are not. And sin is when we fall short of living in that relationship as he has called us, as he has intended us. Sin breaks relationships. Think of your own failures in your life, those that have affected your relationships. Sometimes relationships are broken even. This happens with God. Every sin is a walking away from God. But it's even deeper than that. It's not just that we make mistakes from time to time. The Bible says that we have a sinful condition. We don't have to learn how to be selfish. It comes naturally. And that's why we sin. To err truly is human. Look at this verse from Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's true for all people. And we know it. We know we're not perfect. You ever tried to be perfect? It doesn't work too well. We fall short. Now, the way we talk about sin, some of the distinctives about it are distinctively Christian. But you know, all religions acknowledge that there's something wrong. We are not what we could be. Now, religion as a human institution is humanity's attempt to repair the relationship, to right this wrong, to, to get back to God, or to grow closer to God, however God is envisioned. And it's often envisioned as a stairway to heaven. I'm not talking about Led Zeppelin here. But rather that we, we look at religion or religious activities as a stairway that leads us to the spiritual goal. Whatever 
that is envisioned to be. God, nirvana, oneness with the cosmic consciousness, paradise. And there are a variety of things that are proposed as means for climbing the ladder, climbing the stairway toward the spiritual goal. Good deeds, being a good person, uh, learning the proper way to meditate, and so merge with the cosmic consciousness. For some, it's performing the right performance of certain rituals, or praying the right prayer. Or perhaps a certain level of suffering will ensure that you make it to the next level um, and martyrdom, and unfortunately, some even look at intentional martyrdom as a way to climb the ladder to heaven. But here's the good news. This is not Christianity. Christianity is not a religion about climbing a ladder or a stairway to help us to get to God, to placate God, to get God on our side, to show God our worthiness. That's not Christianity. That's not the gospel. Christianity is about grace, and that word once again means gift. It's not us climbing the stairway to heaven. It's God coming down in Jesus Christ to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. This is a completely free and totally accomplished gift. And it's one that we receive through faith, not by performing a deed or an act or ritual, simply through faith, believing and trusting that God indeed loves us and wants to give this gift to us. Now, that verse we mentioned earlier, Romans 3.23, this is how it continues. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Justified is a legal word. It comes out of the courtroom. It means to be acquitted, declared innocent, forgiven. Redemption means to be paid for. And this is what Jesus did for us by his life, by his death on the cross, and by his rising again. Here's another verse from a few chapters later. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Instead of perishing, we have eternal life. Think of death as the enemy. Think of guilt as a sentence. Jesus has won a great victory and given it to you. And it's a gift, once again, not something we earn or try to prove that we deserve. Here's another one from 1 John chapter 2. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is an atoning sacrifice. We'll talk about that more in a few lessons, but for now, it's this point. He died to take away your sins, and not just yours, the sins of all people of all time. This is grace, and this is what Jesus has done. He lived the righteous life we could not live. Remember that we have a sinful nature, and we cannot live the perfect life that God wants us to, that we know we should. And he won the victory for us that we could not win. Can you stop death? He has done this with his victory over sin, death, and the devil. And he took our sins from us and gave his righteousness to us. A great exchange. He identifies with us in taking our sin. We identify with him through faith in receiving his righteousness. And so because our sins are now paid in full, we can be considered right with God through faith in Jesus. So well, let's sum this up. God gives freely, that's grace. We receive, that's faith. And the result is an eternal, forgiven, transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. Now here's a few verses from Paul's letter to the Ephesians that sum this up very well. And I'm going to unpack it as I, as I read it. For it is by grace you have been saved. Once again, that means gift. Through faith, believing, trusting. And then just to make sure we get the point, Paul says, and this not from yourselves. It's not you climbing the ladder. It is the gift of God. Not by works. Remember that list of things people come up with to climb the ladder to the stairway to heaven. It's not by works. 
so that no one can boast. Nobody who is saved by grace through faith can feel superior or boastful about what they have accomplished because they've accomplished nothing. Jesus did. And then we go on. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We don't do good works in order to be saved. We do them because we are saved. And we'll talk about that uh, in a future lesson in more detail. So grace, Christianity, the gospel, it's not about religion or religious system, but about a relationship. It's not about achieving, but receiving. It's not about do, but done in Christ. Here's another verse. This would be a good one to memorize. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children of God. A real relationship. Not just academic information that we've learned, but a relationship like a parent and a child. Now, my prayer is that you have this. The way we this class works is we'll be getting together to talk about this material, but this is so critical. If you have questions about your relationship with Jesus, whether you have one, how to have one, don't put that off until the end of all the sessions to talk about it with me. Contact me now. Let's get together and talk about it. This foundational lesson, this foundational reality is not just something we're going to build on academically, but building spiritually a relationship with Jesus Christ by grace through faith. Now, as I explained in the introduction, um, Luther's small catechism, which I hope you picked up by now, we're going to use that for supplemental reading and for review of some of the things that we've talked about in the online sessions. So, going along with this lesson on the gospel, questions 80 to 85, which can be found on pages 165 to 168. Please read over those. Well, this has been Discovering the Christian Faith, Session 1. Now, please click on the link on the Discovering the Christian Faith page on the website to go to the follow-up quiz whenever you're ready. This is Pastor Mike Schmidt from St. John's Lutheran Church in Napa, California. May God bless your walk and your growth.